Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Beer Garden. Our team, Joshua, Joe, Steve, and myself, is going to discuss the Saturday race card at Sha Tin. There will be 10 races over the tight C plus 3 course, featuring race 7. That will be the Group 3 National Day Cup over 100 meters. It is one of the only two Group 3s uh, over the straight course. So this year, there will be seven horses in the field, and we are going to talk about it before our travel selections, as well as our best bet and value bet so in race seven the highlights of the day group three national day cup who is your pick joshua yeah i think uh my best bet of the day comes up here in the sprint race so i landed with cordycep six um I'm, I'm making on some natural progression from this horse uh, after taking out the chartin bays uh, at the end of last season beating her lucky patch and nervous witness our uh, start before is the one I want to highlight. He he ran a close second behind Lucky with you, who we've we've seen come out and win this season already. Um, Cordy Step Six arguably should have won that race and um, easily beat the rest of the field nicely. So, look, I think natural progression uh, at weight for age. He gets in really really well at the weights. Um, just carrying it would be fifty five. 0.8 in technicality, so you might as well say 50, uh, 56 kilos with Alexi Bedell aboard. And I just think natural progression is just going to take him through this race. Uh, and he's drawn, I know one's not usually ideal up the straight, but it's not a big field and he's got a superior, superior speed to most of these. So I I've, would be very surprised if he's not fighting at the finish. Yes, Cordyceps 6, number 6 as well, and uh, it is an up-and-coming four-year-old who is a good sprinter in Hong Kong at the moment, and this time he will also be ridden by Alexi Bedell breaking from gate 1, see how he progress after the summer break. Joe, who is your selection in race 7? Uh, my selection has really liked the 1200, now he goes back to the 1000, is uh, Master 8 uh, with Matthew Chadwick. I there's I still have I I was really close to picking Skyfield because he was second last year and then I did want to pick Super Wealthy because he won the race last year, but I think Master Eight is undefeated uh, uh over the up the straight a thousand and he's won a G three over the thousand so, um, it, I I really I think I think he'll bounce back here um in this race and he had two trials and they were pretty good. And his last one was a second, and now Matthew Chadwick is getting used to him. We did have Joe Marrera on him before, um, but then Matthew Chadwick was the alternate whenever Joe Marrera was on another mount. So it's going to be a tough race. I think Skyfield is going to come in from the back. Super Wealthy is another one. I think the speed map is saying that Harmony and Rich is going to be on the pace. Stronger could be up there. He's another one that caused an upset, too. But I think Master 8 will bounce back this race. So I'm going to go with number 5, Master 8 with Matthew Chadwick. Yes, Master 8, number 5, he will break from gate 6. And then I believe he can stay in a good position. Do you agree, Steve? Yeah, I went for Master 8 as well. I think it's one of these small, it's half the size of the field last year, of course. Only seven runners. I just think it's got trappy all over it. Cordyceps 6 is the is the up-and-coming horse, of course, the improver. But as Joe says, I like Master 8 too. You have to sort of take it on trust that he's going to bounce back to form. But he won on his debut then last season. He won after a 133-day break. And as Joe says, unbeaten over the five furlongs. Beaten it was witnessed in the site's success. And it's an interesting race. I super wealthy, of course, won last year. And he got really badly hampered in his, uh, was it the Executive's Cup? I'm trying to think if it was the Executive's Cup, actually. But it was when uh, Trillion Way really sort of backed into him. And uh, yes, it was. And he lost he lost all chance there. Stayed on well to finish fourth to Lucky Swainis. And Lucky, Lucky Patch, actually, just hasn't recovered, has he, from that horrible ordeal he had in the Long Jeans Hong Kong Sprint. He was favourite for that race. And uh, he was on a hat trick that day. He hasn't really rediscovered his form. I just think maybe mentally he's not the same horse as he was. Mm -hmm. But yes, for me, Master 8, he's drawn 6. It's quite close to the rail. And at the moment, with uh, Joe Marrera off, it's Matthew Chadwick's gain, um, gain actually, um, having having the, the, the mount on Master 8, who's still very lightly raced, isn't he? Disappointed the last time, but there's still plenty of improvement, I think, to come. He's a really likeable horse. 
Yes, I think so. Master egg will also be my selection in this group three. Uh, I believe that there are some pace in this field because Harmony and Rich is expected to lead and Master egg can just stay behind him. And also Lucky Patch, Super Wealthy and Skyfield will also get the rail with Cordyceps eggs and Stronger next to them inside them. So Master egg will be a great position for him and Matthew Cherry on board. I think he is definitely a great jockey. Just won the Tony Cruz award last season. And and Master Egg just had an impressive barrier trial before this race. So I believe he is still competitive at the age of five. So to recap our bet, our our selection in race seven, the Group 3 National Day Cup, Joshua has the best bet here. That will be number six, Cody Sub six, and then Joe, Steve, and myself agrees with but number five, Master X. So it should be a horse, a race between two horses. And hopefully that can be a Cornetta for you. So let's continue to the first leg of the travel. That will be race X. It is a class three over 1200 meters. Joshua, who do you like in race X? I'm not happy I'm all alone in that last race. Um, pressure's on. Um, the first leg of the travel. Uh, this is a quite a nice little race. Um, I narrowed it down to the two which is sake win and oriental smoke uh sake win coming back for a 92 day break but i i think oriental smoke he blew me away uh with his return um this season winning two and a half lengths uh in the shot in 1200 meters i think uh i think from a, an ideal draw i know he's gone up in weight uh and that is a slight query but um Look, I'm, I'm just banking on that run under his belt uh, to be able to get the upper hand on Sake Win, who I know is probably going to leave this race from the inside barrier. Um, I just wasn't a fan with the way that Sake Win finished off last season. I know one of them was on a wet track, uh, but he also ran fourth to Brilliant Way um, and Bazinga in uh, – it was his run of the preparation. So I think maybe he's – at that point where I think he needs to go up in class and drop the weight. Um, I have a strange inkling that the weight uh, might be an issue for him. Um, but anyway, we'll see how it all pans out. But I think Oriental Smoke with the run under his belt, Zach Purton aboard, uh, barrier two, I think he's ready to go. And uh, I'm happy to back him in, in the first leg of our treble. Yeah, so number one, Oriental Smoke with top ways, but he gets Zach Purton on board. And of course, the good draw gates. Number two, last time out, he just won impressively. The finishing time was really solid. And Joe, how about you? Who do you like in race eight? Race eight, uh, I went with uh, number two, Super Fortune. And Josh was mentioning the race that he won. Super Fortune was in that race too, but he got fourth. So um i know he has a a wide draw that he has to overcome he's drawn number nine uh the speed map is suggesting him to be in the front and i think that uh with angus chung this time on board uh with that 4.5 kilos off i think he could stay on and, and go on with it on the lead um he could turn the tables i just like that angus chung now gets that gets the ride i know um oriental smoke has had a had a really good debut that time but um, yeah, I think the 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 weight's gonna matter in this one. I mean, he was second to Flying Ace, Gallant Express, five, uh, and he beat Gallant or he beat five elements, and then he also won, um, his race back in May against Trig eight Trigrams. So I I really like him over the twelve hundred. I think he's gonna be the speed of the speed. So um, I I hope he could just hang on and and keep from it. I mean, he's he has the 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 weight off of his back now but i mean this is a, a pretty tough race too because sake win was a last beaten favorite reef parison was a last beaten favorite so they're all trying to they're all trying to bounce back uh in this race so but I, i'm gonna go with uh, number two super fortune for me Yes, there are some fast horses in the field, but I believe number two, Super Fortune, with Angus Chung on board, will be the leader because he is one of the course and distance specialists in this field. Just a good warm up one last time out and second up today, he should improve. Steve, how about you? Who do you fancy in race eight? Yeah, I went for number four, Saki Win. A nice horse again. It's a case of Moreira's losses, Chadwick Skeen, because he gets on the horse for the first time. who would have been on for all four um, runs. Won his first two, and then he went up 10 pounds. He wasn't disgraced on his third run. 
he wasn't disgraced at all. Fourth to a brilliant way. And as uh, Josh says, the yielding to soft ground probably counted the guess that against them last time. Final run of the season, he was third. He likes to go forward in his races, so I think um, gate one's ideal. And uh, yeah, I mean, Oriental Smoke, a really good horse, really respected. It's just take a good horse, I think, to deny to, to defy an eight pound ride. You saw Beauty Glory try and do it uh, last week and up to seven pounds, and he, he couldn't manage. So, I mean, every chance, of course, that person, David Hayes, hopefully, M. Saka win will win. Super 10 needs to improve. Um, big time for his uh, underwhelming reappearance. But I think we're still finding a way, aren't we, with the season? It's just started. Mm. There's a few horses here making their debut. And it's hard sometimes knowing which horses who run well at the beginning, if they can take a, another step forward, or horses that run below par at the beginning, if they can make a, a giant leap. So I think we're still finding our feet. Well, that's my excuse if, in case you have a dismal, <laughs> <laughs> a dismal Saturday. But for me, Saka yeah. hopefully could win. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, because I agree with Steve. Number four, sick win for me as well. As uh, we just mentioned that there are some speed in this field and we expect, I expect that sick win break from gate one can get the rail definitely. And good to have uh, Matthew Cherwick on board because Matthew Cherwick gets a lot of good rides on Saturday. I believe he is able to win the jockey challenge as well. And sick win just had a good barrier trial before uh, this race. He just turned four years old, still unexposed. I likely race. I expect him to improve in this season at four year old. So to recap race eight, number one, Oriental Smoke for Joshua, number two, Super Fortune for Joe, and then number four, Sick Green for both Steve and myself. Then race night, that will be a class two race over a mile. Joshua, who do you like in race night? Yeah, geez, these two last two races were, were really tough to assess. Um, I, I found that there's several horses that can win these races. Um, I landed with Money Catcher, uh, who finished off last season with a couple of nice placings. Uh, on the you know, the dead ground at Happy Valley ran a nice second to Soulmate, who who had the uh had the favours that day of leading um and ha had the kick away. Money catcher almost caught him in the end. And then Bourbon Air, well, Bourbon Air finished last season like a cracker and uh, he ended up winning by six lengths. But he was the next, uh, he ran second in that race, beating home Running Glory and Sight Spirit. And then he ended the season with that nice tight second to Turin Red Sun. Um, back in grade is, is probably the key here. Uh, I know he's going to have to carry the 61 kilos, but back into class two is, is ideal. Uh, I had a quick squeeze at the map too, and money catching from the inside draw. Um, obviously, all for St. Paul's is going to come across and be the main, the main bunny here. So, uh, if money catcher can get a nice spot in behind the lead, uh, I know Bourbon here and enjoying might be up there as well, but they're drawn wide, so they're going to have to do a bit of work. So, uh, if Zach can get money catcher into a nice rhythm right behind the lead, I think he's going to be mighty hard to beat late. It does worry me that he only has one, one of eighteen. Uh, but back in grade, I think this might be his best chance to get another win on the board, but it's a tight race. Yes, that's an interesting runner. Money catcher, number one break from a good draw with Zach Porton on board. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, pretty much what Josh said. So I'm with money catcher as well. So he pretty much said what I was going to say. But the other thing is he's drawn one and everybody else is drawn wide. So I'd rather I'm going to go with money catcher as well. Yes, the top weights for him, but I believe last season he also ran well with some top weights. So this time the draw is very helpful. Steve, how about you? Who is your pick in race night? Uh, I went for number nine, Mr. Ascendancy. He's not got the most fantastic draw in 10, but I try not to let the barrier really affect my decisions. Uh, he's quite lightly raced. He had uh, just the three runs, oh, sorry, um, a few more runs over in Britain. And he's quite lightly raced in this um jurisdiction he's only had eight eight local runs and he really found his feet towards the end of last season once the cheek pieces were equipped third to Sylvester second to leading fortune narrowly denied that day and then after a 79 day break he, he beat Casa Papa on the 18th just a few days back really and it was a really nice win under Sylvester D'Souza justified favoritism and I thought the five pound rise was quite fair and, you know, 15 runs, he's he's open to any amount of improvement. I think he could really run well. And, uh, of course, it's a wide-open race. It's a 
really tricky one. Money catcher has been a money catcher for the bookmakers, hasn't it? Because it just can't win, but it's a very mm-hmm. good horse. And uh, and of course, uh, hammered by Bourbon Air um, a couple of runs ago, and then turned round the form. But unfortunately for Money Catcher, just pipped by Turin Redson. That really was his day, wasn't it? Turin Redson to win that time under Zach Burton. But for me, yes, Mr. Ascendancy, hopefully one for Wagner Borges. Yes, the last time winner number nine, Mr. Ascendancy, just broke the maiden in Hong Kong too with a goal over 1,400 meters. This time stepping up to a mile is a good move for him. And my selection here will be going down to the bottom. Number 11, co-partner Elite. He went fifth in the Britannia Stakes last year and settling quite well in Hong Kong starting from last season. He used to race in class three with top weights, but uh, that's a big concern for him. So this time at the rating of 80, trainer Danny Shum just uh, chose to uh, chose a class two race for him, taking out a lot of weight. So this time he will be just carrying 120 pounds, also ridden by Harry Bentley. He knows the horse quite well. So I won't be surprised that if number 11 co-partner Elite can win this class two race. So to recap race night, number one, money catcher for both Joshua and Joe, and then number nine, Mr. Ascendancy for Steve. Number 11, co-partner elite for me. And then we go to race 10. It is class three over 1400 meters. Joshua, who do you like in race 10? Yeah, another race where I found it really hard to assess um, when pricing up this market. I think I've got $4 separating the top of the market to nine horses down. So that's how tight I think this race is going to be. I ended up settling with Amazing Victory uh, after his starting the season with a nice win with Karis Tegna, uh beat home Brave Dreams and Science Patch. We saw Science Patch come out and uh, frank some of that form running a nice second last weekend. Lyle Hewitson will take the ride, so I don't think there's not going to be that much of a loss there, I think, because Lyle's riding uh, brilliantly still uh, at the moment. And they're stepping, he's stepping up 4,800, which is his ideal distance, I reckon. Um, he had a little bit of, uh, a little bit, of, a couple of things went wrong last time he was at 1,400 metres at the end of last season. Uh, he still ran a nice, so I, I think the step up in grade, the drop back to the 53 kilos is ideal. Uh, map wise, uh, he's drawn three, and I, I, I note that. At, it's in the C course, isn't it? C course this weekend. Yes. Um, right. So it's uh, yeah. it's one of those tracks too where I did some research and it barriers aren't really a big factor in the C course, um, not in the last end of last season anyway. But uh, barrier three is drawn, so it, I've mainly based on the map. I think he can get a nice run in transit, and uh, I I think that um, amazing victory can go back to back, but. I tell you what, if you like anything in this race, just back yourself because uh, I reckon there's up to nine horses that can win this race. Yes, he's definitely one of the up-and-coming contenders in the field. Number 11, amazing victory. Do you also like him, Joe? Yeah, I do. And the good thing about going second is I don't have to say much because Josh already, <laughs> he said, I already, already said it. So, yeah, uh, number <laughs> number 11, amazing victory. Yeah, I, I carrying less weight as well i think that um and with 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 lyle hewitson who's been running almost a winner in every except for last except for uh happy valley he's been winning every almost every um every he's been at least winning mm. one race on the card so yes. and we he'll saw that, that he won like yeah you'll get you get that 50 that i predicted at the start of the year on his track yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's ready well i mean and and amazing victory has been running well too um especially that the mm. the win first up so 1400 i don't think it's going to be a problem there is a lot of horses in this race that looks really it they look really tough but i'm gonna go with the the weight on our side here and that's the number 11 amazing victory only carrying 53 kilos as well Yes, a light weight for him. Actually, he tried 1,400 meters last season. Uh, he also finished quite well. This time with a good draw, he should have some improvement. And Steve, who do you like in race 10? I went for number 12, lucky goal. Though I, I, if I start picking Josh's, I'll even even less to say than Joe, and I can just say next. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I thought I'd go for lucky goal. He, he's still to open his account in Hong Kong, but... Uh, Ran a good race last time. It's a race where he takes on two of those horses once again. Tempest Express, who finished second to Gallant Crown, and Circuit Stella, 
who again ridden by Angus Chung, an interesting horse. I like the run of Lucky Gold. Vincent Ho stays loyal to the horse. He was beaten two and a quarter lengths. He almost never really lost that position. He was almost like two and a, two and a quarter lengths behind the, the leader. And then while well, things moved around him, he just ran his solid race. He was second to Unicorn Baby on his penultimate start under Zach Purton. So it's an interesting horse. And Vincent Ho in good form. He's won three of his last four. So he'll do for me. But I wouldn't be surprised mm. if anything. I mean, even Hossein Bolt at the bottom of Matthew Poon. Um, he's making a quick return to action. But he also did the same. He ran respectably last season when he had uh, a five-day five day comeback. So anything could win this. But lucky gold for me. Yes, Vincent Ho is on fire at the beginning of the season. So number 12, Lucky Go, a lightweight for him, also having quite a good chance. And for me, I will go for number one, Circus Stella. I would like to give him one more chance. I think there were some excuses last time out because the pace was a bit fast and then he just uh, failed to keep till the end. So this time still ridden by Angus Strong. I believe that after a warm-up one, second up today, he should have some improvement. Actually, at the rate of 80 I think he is a bit difficult to have some breakthrough but it is good to have an apprentice jockey on board so taking out a lot of weights just carrying 125 pounds five pounds and jumping from gates eggs I think that he is still able to lead and get the rail and if he can get the rail I believe he deserves one more chance so to recap race 10 Number 11, Amazing Victory for Joshua and Joe. And then number 12, Lucky Gold for Steve. Number one, Circuit Stella for me. So that's were our travel selections. Let's jump to our best bet on Sunday at Shatin. Joshua, who will be your best bet? Can you remind us? Yeah, that was uh, race seven, number six, Cordy's F6. I just think he's progressive. I think the group three... Um, He's won 50% of his races. And just to correct myself from before, it is in the C plus three course or 12 and a 12.2 meters, if you want to look at it in a meters perspective. So um Cordy step six for me as my best bet. Yeah, so race seven, number six, Cordy step six in the group three. He is also a group three winner last season. So uh we are quite looking forward to see him at the age of four year old. Joe, how about you? Who will be your best bet? Uh, best bet's going to be at a race of number three. It is a 1,200-meter race, class four. I went with uh, number seven, Vincent Hosemount, one voice. So one voice made his debut and got, a, I think, an eye-catching second to the winner. And um, son of American Pharaoh, so really cool to see the American Pharaohs making their way over to Hong Kong, trying to get winners there. I know they've done really well in, in Australia, so... Really nice to see that. But he did run uh, two decent trials before uh, coming here. So he trialed well, but he got a second on his debut race on the 24th. So he's lightly raced. He put him on a 158-day spell. So he's going to be coming off a layoff again, just like everyone else. But um, with the 56 kilos, he's drawn three. I think he has a chance in this race to, to, to beat some of these other ones. Uh, a lot of them don't really have that good form. Uh, unless you're going to like the top weights, but the top weight's only going to carry 58 in this class four, which is interesting to see. Mm. Um, but I think one voice after that debut, I think he'll he'll run really good race uh, as my best bet. So that's going to be race number three, number seven, one voice. And Vincent Ho's been doing really well this season so far, just like some of the other ones like Lyle Hewittson. So I, mm. I would love to see him have that win here for this best bet. Yes, so race three, number seven, one voice for Joe as her, uh, as his best bet. Yes, written by Vincent Ho, breaking from gate three, just the second start for him in Hong Kong. And I also expect him to improve with some good very trial performance. And Steve, who will be your best bet on Saturday? I uh, took a bit of a chance in the 7.30 over 1,400 metres and I went for number eight over the moon. I thought it was a hard meeting to really have a definitive best bet. I, did, I didn't want to go back to the four selections that we've already had because I didn't have too much conviction over these. So I thought I'd spread my net a little bit wider. Um, over the moon, he's a nice horse, uh, a good opportunity for Keith, Keith Young. And uh, he's a three run seventh over the 1200 meters on debut to California Veins and then fourth to Super Sunny Singh. And he signed off last 
season with a third under um, Joe Moreira to HK Dragon. That's nice form. He's an interesting horse. I followed him from the beginning and he always he just looks like a horse that's improving with each run. And I thought there was some merit in his recent trial as well. So he'll do for me over the moon. If he doesn't win, he's certainly one to follow. Yes, definitely. Number eight over the moon in race four. His performance last season was really eye-catching. And then after the summer break, he is now more mature. So this time breaking from gates seven, I believe he is going to stay in the back. However, he is a consistent uh, horse. He always shows some great turn of foot in the home straight. So for my best bet, it will be in race six, number five, Midori Beauty. Before coming to Hong Kong, he was unbeaten two from two in Australia. Australia, and then he just finished third in his second up last season in Hong Kong. Uh, turning four year old this season, just had a brilliant barrier trial with Zach Corden on board. He can show some good speed, and this time uh, in race six, I believe there are a lot of fast horses here, so the pace will be quite favorable for Midori Beauty to chase. So I will go for him, especially with Zach Corden on board. So to recap our best bet on Sunday at Sha Tin, race seven, number six, Cordyceps six for Joshua, and then race three, number seven, one voice for Joe, race four, number eight, over the moon for Steve, and race six, number five, Midori Beauty for me. So how about the outsider we like? Joshua, who will be your value bet? Yeah, I've gone back one more race in uh, race number five. I think we can get some value around rock, paper, scissors here. Um, this does look a re another really open race uh, between like Turquoise Alpha, who could probably hit back, President's Choice, Last Start winner, uh, Oscar Glory, Darcy Joy smoothies. So I think we can get some value about rock, paper, scissors. Uh, he's got some, he's going to have some good upside coming into this season uh, as a four year old. Two back uh, over the 1400 meters. Look, it does read a 2.3 length second, but it was to Tuchel, who has, or two shell, sorry, who has come out and won since brilliantly uh, to start the new season. But it was worth noting that he beat home uh, Wide Blue Yonder by over two lengths as well. And also running in that race, Amazing Victory, who's come out and started this season uh, well. So I thought that was a nice little form race. And then he finished the season with a 3.1 length uh, fifth. The mm -hmm. thing is with him is he gets he hasn't had a very good draw. The, the closest he's drawn is Barrier 7. He's drawn Barrier 8 here. He gets Zach aboard. So I think that he, it'll be a bit more positive. I don't think he'll settle any closer than midfield. Uh, there's no pace in this race. The key here is he's stepping up to the mile for the first time. Um, and I, that's what I'm saying. I think we'll get some value about it because of how open this race is. And I think he's got nice upside from the Frankie Law stable. And I think the mile will suit him down to the ground. So that's uh, number race five, number four, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, I think so. Rock, paper, scissors, number four in race five. There is no pace here. So uh, he breaks from gates number eight with Zach Burden on board. He can stay in a better position. And of course, the 1600 meters is a good distance for him. So Joe, who will be your value bet on Saturday? Uh, value bet's going to be uh, race number two, and that's over the thousand. So that's up the straight. Um, so we have another up the straight race. I uh, went with number eight, Fantastic Choice. Um, Antoine Hamlin had that incident where he broke through the barrier with Cigar Buddies, and I thought that, that was probably one of his best chances to win a race so far in the season. But I think uh, with draw number 10, and he has some uh, he has some uh, sprint pedigree, if you look back, because he's about of a choice, choice here, or choice there, or I don't know how to say it, but C-H-O-I-S-R, Choisier, Choisier. Choisier. there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a French thing. I can't really pronounce those. I'll let Steve do that. But um, yeah. So yeah, he has a, a a lot of good, good pedigree. They're they're on the sprinting side. So I think um, with a thousand, it will be okay. I, I did. I was gonna say sparkling dolphin, but that's a, it's a he's mm. kind of a a little bit of an enigma because he'll like win a race and then all of a sudden he won't win a race for a while. So, um, but I think uh, the debut his trials are really good. I was watching his stride when he was doing the when they were doing the track work videos. He looks. He looks really good on the dirt, um, so I think it'll transition to the turf. Um, I mean, there's another. There's a lot of uh, first-time starters in this one, but I landed on Fantastic jo uh, Choice because his trial are really good. Uh, we'll see how he climatizes with with Sha Tin because they were all in, at Chung Fa. So, um, but he wasn't too far off. He's had a second, a third, and a second in his trials, and they weren't they weren't bad. Like they're point three lengths, point eight lengths, point one lengths. So. 
I think he could run a sneaky race, uh, at least in the placings, to win maybe. But I think I think he'll hit the placings. So number eight, fantastic choice for me. Yeah, so there are three uh, debutants in race two, including number eight, fantastic choice. That will be Joe's value bet. I'm quite sure that he will have a huge prize for him. Uh, actually, Gates 10 is very really helpful for him. And just like Joe mentioned, that good category, choice C, out of a fantastic light mare, I believe he should have a brilliant future in Hong Kong. And this time he gets a good draw. So don't forget him in race two. And Steve, can you tell us who will be your bet, uh, value bet? Yes, I went to race number three, which is over the 1,200 metres, and I went for Charming Steed, who is one from ten. He had three seconds in his first four races, and he's done he's predominantly run at Happy Valley. In fact, one worrying aspect is the only run he's had at, at Shatin was the furthest he's been beaten, seven and a quarter lengths. But he didn't run that badly that day, and I think he's got more to offer. He's a nice horse. And uh, he returned over an ina inadequate thousand meters at Happy Valley. Stayed on quite well behind Super Commander, and as I say, more to offer. He's reasonably well drawn. It's uh, a value bet, so it'll be interesting to see how he does. But again, I think he's a horse that will find uh, another couple of wins in um, this season. Charming Steed for me in race number three. Yes, Charming Steed's race three, number three, also ridden by Matthew Chadwick. As I just mentioned, that I think that. He gets a lot of good rides on Saturday. So Charming Steeds is definitely one of the winning hopes for him. Moving to Sha Tin, he should be able to handle the track as well. And for my for me, my value bet goes to race four, number eleven. Perfect Peach. He will be ridden by Lyle Hewison. Uh, after eight attempts at Happy Valley with two placings last season, moving to Shatin this time and then stepping up to 1400 meters should be a good decision for this Sibin gelding. So this time ridden by Lyle Hewison, he just finished fifth under him last time out. But uh, I think it is quite a good first up for him. So second up today, break from a good draw, gates number three and also carrying a lightweight 118 pounds i believe he can also handle the shouting track as well so to recap our best bet on saturday race five number four rock paper scissors for joshua and then race two number eight fantastic choice for joe race three number three charming steed for steve and race four number 11 perfect pitch for myself so that's all for our picks and for shouting please be reminded that it will be a saturday meeting on october 1st our tips just covered race two to race 10 on the cast just leaving the opener for you so thanks for watching the beer garden we will see you again next week for the happy valley preview see you next time goodbye <laughs>